my friends, this is Arrowhead. Endgame name is September on Thunderwing, the new e server, fresh start, as well as on the public test server. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to expose the best methods to rising to the top of the fresh start servers. So strap in, tie one on, and take a puff because here we go. All right, getting right into it, the first thing you should know is why I'm sharing these methods. I am a very avid user of open source software, and I firmly believe that the real currency in the cosmos is knowledge. By sharing this info with you, I hope to give everybody the same foundation in which to build on. What you do with it, or whether you like the fact that I'm sharing or actually hate it, I am who I am, and I believe that hoarding knowledge for just about any reason is at the very least deceptive if not outright greedy and vile in the worst case. Number one, across region alt. This actually may not be a secret to some of you, but for the true new players, you're not gonna really know what the heck is going on. What I'm talking about when I say cross region alts or cross region characters, even if you plan on only having one account, a single character in each region, regardless of where you choose to play, is going to increase your income. This is because each region has a separate labor pool and a separate loyalty generation. So the way you capitalize this is by logging into the quote, other region. Whether that means EU or North America for you doesn't really matter. What you'll be doing is gathering five daily loyalty tokens if you have patron and burn your labor there. Now, first of all, if I'm gonna say labor is gold and uh, so is loyalty. We'll discuss what you can do with labor and loyalty more as I reveal more secrets, but the gist of it is this, is by gathering the free labor and loyalty and using it the gold that you are making, you can buy Apex with on that region. Then you use that Apex on the other region to either buy stuff to sell or uh, you can use it to buy patron time and then use the money you would have spent on patron uh, to buy other stuff to sell. Number two multiple accounts so in the same vein as labor equals gold simply having multiple accounts will help you increase your personal access to labor so if you don't know just about everything in arc age takes labor longtime players have found out that making multiple accounts is key to being able to play and earn gold throughout their whole play session multiple accounts can be used to find and process raw materials gain access to crafting recipes locked behind higher proficiencies and become nearly if not completely self-sufficient now i have to admit it i absolutely hate this fact about the game but it is so much so a fact that longtime players e can't even imagine playing arc age without multiple accounts fresh start is going to be no different I know many returning players already have plans to have three to even up to 20 accounts to take full advantage of this unfortunate mechanic of Arc Age. Number three, patron up. What is better than having multiple accounts? Well, having multiple patron accounts, of course. Playing Arc Age without patron, especially when you're just first starting out, is like wiping your butt with a poison ivy leaf. Sure, it'll work, but after a few days it's going to be very unpleasant and leave you ostracized from the public simply because you have stinky fingers. The three things about Patreon that matter the most, and there's a lot of benefits to it, but the three that I want to point out is number one, it increases your labor pool and your regeneration rate, meaning you earn more labor in less time. The second thing is it gives you access to the free loyalty tokens on both regions. And the third thing is, is even if you can't log in in a particular day because of work or whatever, your labor will keep regening even while offline. All that said, if you plan on playing Arc Age as a free to play player, this is the number one thing that you need to spend your gold on, even before buying weapons and armor. Patron first. 
everything else after which gets much easier. Number four, rush and focus on a single proficiency. You need to figure out what you want to do to make money and be among the first to get there. If you want to be a crafter, spend every bit of labor you get on that and only that. It doesn't matter what that is, whether it's crafting, larceny, fishing, trading, farming, gathering, husbandry, it doesn't matter. If you have a character, whether it's your main or even an alt, every bit of your labor should be spent on one thing, one proficiency. This is going to increase your profits in two ways. One, by being the first person to have the ability to craft something, you're going to have the market cornered. You can charge what you want. Second, as your proficiencies get higher, you start using less labor to do anything in that proficiency. As such, your silver to labor ratio just gets higher and higher. Along with this, rushing is another thing that you'll see people employing heavily on this fresh start. What I mean by this is people will be using their alt accounts or any method in which to get labor over to another character to boost that proficiency score even higher. Remember, as you use labor in a proficiency, the more proficiency you get. I'm uncertain at the time of this video if the labor potions will be available in the Fresh Start Loyalty Store, but if they are, the large labor potions are going to be a very hot commodity. People are going to be considering them as an investment. I want to mention that on the last time that we had fresh starts, there was a user who rushed to max husbandry. And within a week of getting that max level, which is 230,000, he had made over 200,000 gold simply by making and selling animal pens. So there are going to be some proficiencies that are more profitable than others, but one thing is for sure, being the first will mean big, big profit. Number five, do without. If you plan on playing the long term, don't spend your money on something that you're not really using or that you just may use in the future. If you're going to spend your gold on anything, it should be only for an investment. Eventually, you'll have more gold than even Fort Knox and Poseidon's love child, at which point you can just buy whatever you want. The masses are going to be rushing to get the best weapon and armor pieces possible. They're, they are going to be overpaying and wasting gold. You can just sit back and take advantage of those people who are overpaying. This could mean that you're going to start selling things that you may use in the future, but you don't need right now. That could be things like prestige vocation, gilda, or even honor. If you're not using them, sell them and then use that extra gold to invest in other things early on. Number six, buy Apex early. We've already been through two fresh starts and even a launch here in Arcage, and each time those who stockpiled Apex are the ones who come out on top. If you're wondering how much Apex will be, all you have to do is look at the legacy servers in that region. Because if time has taught us anything, we know that eventually the fresh start servers will merge with the legacy servers. And that means that all the values of everything becomes universal. So those 500 or even 200 gold Apex that you could buy now will eventually be worth a thousand gold. Even if you don't plan on waiting the year or whatever it is until those auction house merges, Apex, those prices will be going up steadily throughout the first several months. So if you have extra gold, invest in Apex. Number seven, pay attention to the auction house. I cannot tell you how many people I've known who have lost money simply because they didn't take the time to look at the auction house. So what's going to happen is there's going to be these people listing stuff on the auction house to try to trick you to think that an item is worth less than what it actually is. So always look at the auction house. Look to see the daily and the weekly averages of anything that you plan on listing. There is going to be an asshole trying to lowball you uh, to get you to list your items, especially if you have stacks of them. 
uh, for cheaper than what they're actually worth. So if you see that guy trying to lowball people, buy whatever one or two items that he has listed, and uh, you're going to make a little silver or gold. But most importantly, you're also going to help prevent other people from getting screwed by this. Additionally, start remembering the values that you see. Once you uh, get them built into your brain and know what something's worth, you'll know a good deal when you see it. Number eight, do your dailies and do the events. The dailies are a very good source of pretty easy gold. Uh, they pay you vocation, gold, and gilded stars. So you have these login dailies, which uh, can be somewhat easy to somewhat challenging, but any one that you can do without spending much time, make sure that you get it done. Also, making your own family or getting into a family will also provide family dailies, which can give you extra vocation. And finally, there are also guild dailies that will allow you to earn prestige. Uh, now saying that not every daily is going to be easy, but learn your limits and learn which ones you can do and do them. Finally, XL and Tryon always have new events coming out. Make sure that you take advantage of these early. We don't know for sure what events are coming or what rewards they're going to have, but when they launch, if you can do them, be sure to do them. If the rewards, in fact, are sellable, uh, remember the number five to do without. If you don't think the value of something is going to increase, just sell it during the event. And finally, if you do not know what to buy with your event coins, you can always save them and return to Mirage Isle and there'll be a crafting workbench which accepts event coins even after the event ends. Finally, I'm going to leave you with this last bit of advice. Starting out on Fresh Start servers, the raw resources are going to be extremely valuable. Well, what I'm talking about here is things like stone, metals, silver, iron, copper, gold, archaeum, uh, logs, plants, and the stuff like that. There are many spots across Eranor that spawn these items just generally. Uh, just about every zone on the map in Arc Age has what they call wild nodes. This stuff costs you only labor to harvest it, and if it's a proficiency that you plan on maxing out, all the better. The mining fields of Halo Hollow or Arkham Iris, the Rice of Villanelle, the Rubber Trees and Mahadavi are places that I would hit right away. I will be doing my quest lines up to and getting a mount, then immediately start focusing on my professions. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is let the marketplace normalize for a couple days because things are just going to be crazy. I don't recommend buying and selling right away. But once the marketplace normalizes, you can start implementing my strategy from above. Well, that is it for this episode. More Fresh Start info coming soon, so stay tuned. If you're new here, please make sure that you like and subscribe. If you got some advice you'd like to share to new players, please feel free to do so. If you want to be nasty and dis disrespectful about the game or about me, you may do so as well. You know, it's a free country. But don't be surprised if your comments get removed and your access to this channel gets blocked. I also hope that everybody enjoyed my new intro video, and now it's time for the outro video. Well, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you have found this information both helpful and informative. That is the goal of each video. Special credits to Al Hassan Muhammad. Facebook Vibe Skies and YouTube Al Hassan Muhammad for the intro and this outro music. This video was edited by Arid. You can find me on Twitch TV, Arid underscore, as well as YouTube channel, Arid. Uh, if you'd like to support me, you can follow me on Patreon, Twitch, as well as if you would like a one-time donation, you can do that via Streamlabs. I'd also like to thank my current Patreons, Umukon Onal and Billy Cool, as well as all these Twitch subs that are listed here. Thank you very much. And then the one-time top donors, Riot Devil, Mac PPS, Ascendra, Eldurn, and Wick and Vape. You guys are all awesome. Thank you very much for the support. And as promised, I will recognize you in each and every one of my videos. So if you'd like to support me, please do so. Until next time, this is September saying, be well.